life. Now we just started. A very good afternoon, everyone. This is Aparna Mishra, founder editor of Women Shine. Welcomes you all today. For this uh, Women's Day, you know, we have planned a full week for you from 1st of March from today till 8th of March, wherein we'll have various women achievers talking about their journey, their challenges, their achievements. So today we have Shoma Mitra with us in conversation with Vini Maheshwari. Do follow our Women Shine Facebook page so that you can get all the updates. Now let's few, uh, I wanted to just introduce Shoma with wonderful line because she's so inspiring when I was just reading her, uh, you know, bio data, it's really, very inspiring. So Shoma is primarily an editor and author coach and has also written a number, book, a number of books. Her passion today is to help people write and publish their books because she honestly believes that every person has a story and the world needs to hear those stories too. In the past two years since the pandemic began, she has helped over 55 people to publish the books and generate some valuable media attention. Wings of a Women was published on International Women's Week last year and has been creating waves in India and internationally. This year on International Women's Week, she has brought out another anthology written by new entrepreneurs called Limitless Breaking Boundaries in Business, which is already number one on the top new releases. So I would request Rini really to take the conversation forward so that we know more about Shoma, her work, her beautiful journey. Over to you, Rini. Really. Good afternoon, Shoma. Ma'am, how are you? Yeah, good, good. So lovely to be here. Yeah. So first of all, wishing you a very happy Women's Week, and thank you so much for joining us today. I hope everybody is going to be thrilled and inspired by what you have done. So I will thank begin you this for discussion. Having me. Yeah. So I will be, uh, begin this discussion with my first question. And like, can, uh, can you please tell us something about your agency that Aparna Ma'am just mentioned and what all you do in that? Okay, so the agency, is, it's called um, Right Click Writing Services. This is something I began in 2010. So initially it started as a content creation and management agency. And what we were doing was we were developing websites and um, creating content for businesses, a little bit of which we still do now, but they're more like author websites that we do now. And um, But from there, we transitioned, and that's part of the story that I'll tell you later, into purely now helping people write, edit, publish, and market their books, uh, because that is my passion. That's my mission now, is to help as many people as possible um, to write and publish their books. I think uh, that that is yeah. wonderful because uh, you are jo not just a writer, but actually inspiring other people to take up writing and uh, like write wonderful stories they have. So I guess that is really yeah, very, uh, so the, my background is media and journalism. So uh, I guess writing, editing, publishing, I've been in that area for over 30 years now, like 32, 33 years now. So this is practically the only skill I have or the only passion. And um, there's, a, a, yeah, so really, yes, I write books. I've written uh, quite a few books in the past, many of them pre-Amazon times. I'm also a ghostwriter, incidentally. So I've written books for other people um, where my name is not there. So it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's whoever's the author, their names are on there. So I've done ghostwriting. I've done all kinds. I've written, brought out poetry anthologies, books commissioned. I've done quite a few commissioned works. Um, so what I really want to do is, yes, I love writing. I'm a professional editor. But writing is a, a long, drawn-out process. There are so many moving parts to writing and publishing a book. It's not just that, you know, you open a Word document, you write it, and that's it. Done. That uh, is not the whole readable. Thing. Yeah. If you pick up a book, you know, some books are, you can sit what through and read them in one sitting. Yeah, exactly. And there are some books that, you know, just don't, you don't want to read after 10 pages. So that's why is that? 
So that's what I like to coach people about is how to make a book really readable. What is it that it's an art and a craft. Yeah. So we combine the two. And then, and then of course, there's the polishing, the editing, the cover design, the formatting, the publishing, the marketing. So like I said, it's a lot of moving parts. And often yeah. people think, um, oh, writing a book is so hard. It's, it's not hard. It's just a few simple steps, steps that have to happen one after another. That's all there is. And Basically, so that's it's a process. It's a process. And I want to make that process as easy as possible for anyone who writes, wants to write a book. That is great. So uh, like what inspired to like become a writer and writer and take up writing as a profession since you say you were saying that you are from journalism uh, background. So uh, like how this happened? So probably I was probably born to write because this is what I remember ever since I was a little girl in school. But I think what really um, brought me to this land of stories and collecting stories is because of the stories that I heard from my grandparents, my great grandparents who lived during the two, you know, they went through the two world wars. And when we were growing up, they would tell us stories, not just stories of their lives, but also um you know, uh, fables and folklore and all of that, you know, India has a very, very rich um, legend and folklore and all of those traditions. So we just, we grew up listening to those stories. And I was fascinated from everything from mythological stories to ghost stories to family stuff, you know, histories that they related. But what I never did, I suppose I didn't know as a child was ever write them down. Oh. So I suppose when I transitioned into journalism and media after I did my, you know, whatever education, university education, um, and I became a human interest um, features writer and editor. So my job was to go and interview people, so interview personalities, whether they were film personalities or sports or politicians. And as I did that through the years, I understood that people are not just what they are on the face of a camera. Like there is so much behind the face of that polish politician or the sports person that I'm interviewing because they're people, right? And yes, they've come out and done good things. And that's why they're, you know, they're visible. They're in the media, but they all have personal lives. They all have their own struggles. We all live with our own demons, right? Yeah, and right. as I interviewed them, the story that I published was very, very different from the story that I heard. Because when I would go in for a 20-minute, 30-minute interview, but there were times, not all the time, but there were times with certain people that I sat for three or four hours because they just wanted to spill their stories out. Oh. And, and yeah. they were telling me a stranger complete stranger they were telling me about their backstory their lives their you know the 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 trauma the um, happiness whatever it was that were they were going through they wanted to share that and I learned so much about them as a person that they were not just a politician or a film personality or whatever that's what really got me interested in stories and I realized that no matter who we are whether we are famous personalities or once I did a project with transvestites in India, you know, um, they're, they're, they were looked down in those days, this I'm talking 22, 23 years ago, they were looked down upon on society. And a national newspaper sent me out to do a story with them. So I would go into their community and they would initially, they would send police escorts with me to go and interview these people. And after the second or third time, I told the police, I don't need you. Like, I can just go in. These, the people, the real the people, the real sports. Yeah, they were lovely, lovely people. And that is one of the best projects I've done um, in my life, I think, is going there. I spent about 10 or 12 days with them, understanding how they live, how they work, how they. And really, this is what's brought me into this. That's why I love doing stories. And everybody, no matter what 
people sometimes tell me like, oh, I'm just a homemaker. Oh, I don't do anything special. I just teach in school. Everyone is special because no yeah. two person stories are the same. You have your unique story, unique perspective. So Doing what you do beautifully makes you special, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. We all have our own stories. We're all unique in our own ways. And okay. if we don't write these stories down, they're lost. Because yeah, imagine but... your grandchildren, your, you know, it's a legacy that you leave behind. Ah. It's not just, yes, books will, you know, bring you fame, will bring you visibility, you'll create an impact. But imagine the legacy that you're leaving behind 200, 300 years later. Books will last forever because of that unique ISBN code that you get. It's cataloged right. in the National Library of your country and it'll live on forever. That is right. That That's is what I'm so true. passionate about books. Yeah, <laughs> you can go on and on for this, right? I could, I could. So uh, being a woman, how do you juggle with work and family and like since both being a full-time job? Absolutely. It's more than a full-time job. So yes, um, my three children are grown up now, but yeah, there was a time when it was a real struggle to manage both, you know, their um, schoolwork and their, you know, growing up their all their activities like tennis and piano and whatever, all the classes that they had to go through. So yes, there were times when I was working nights and after dinner, I would do all because my work is writing. A lot of it can be done um, just from home. So I've always had a computer. And before uh, the computers came on, we had the typewriters. and um, uh, But I didn't do that for too long. By the time I started, you know, computers were there. So this is late 90s and early 2000s. We had those big home computers. And uh, often I would be up till 3.30, 4 in the morning after I'd put the kids to bed. And doing my work, so research, writing, publishing, all of that, all my deadlines. And for a while, when as a journalist, um, I was very fortunate to work with a newspaper syndication um, where they allowed me to work from home. So I would have to go and interview and things like that. But a lot of the time, if the children were sick or I could stay home instead of going into the office and uh, work from there. So that was me. I was in television before that, so not many people know that. Uh, for a few years, I worked with Star Television and freelanced for Sony and ZTV in those days. You yeah, um, worked in a variety of journalism. That things. was hard. That was really because they would call me on location at, I don't know, 11 at night, 3 in the morning, like we have a shoot happening. Can you come on location and, you know, change the script or whatever? And that's one of the reasons I had to switch from working in television and go to, to print media print. because the times were better. Yes, yeah. so it was a struggle. Now they're grown up, so I'm I'm much better. But for every woman, not just for me, I think you know managing home and managing a career, whether you're in a job or whether you're in a business, is is a balancing act. Yeah, because. You no, know, but nothing can be left behind. Nothing can be given more priority. All requires yes, the same amount your of priority. Yeah, your partner is your priority. Your work is your priority. And it's just a juggle. But I think, um, I think if you're really passionate about what you do, like you're passionate about bringing up your children, right? You want them the best they can be. You want to have a happy mm -hmm. home. You want to have a good family life. And you can be, you know, take the stress off and let things flow like whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You just try your best. I think probably that's when my hat's off to every single woman in this woman's International Women's Week, because, you know, I'm with you. I know what we're all going through. We're all in this together and we need to support yeah. each other. Yeah, actually, that's that's the that is very important, supporting each other. And yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, next would be, I would like to know about your book, uh, uh, Wings of Women. Uh, Women. I think uh, okay. it's been a year since it released. Since yes, it yes. So it's coming up. It's the anniversary uh, this week. So last year, on I think it was on the 6th of March, we released it just oh, yeah. um, during international. So this book came about, um, I don't know if I've told you, I run various coaching classes online 
um, it's a group coaching for full length books, then, you know, 10 day coaching for people who want to write, understand what it is to get together and write. And so there are very various um, group coaching things that I do. And one of them was called Write With Me, which was I was there. We were in the group for, I think, 10 or 15 days. And we would be there for two, two and a half hours. And every day I coached them through it and then they would write. But they would write with me. So okay. they, I didn't leave it to them to go back and then write because that never happens. You get back to your yeah. family and your friends. It's never no, going to happen. Like, well, yeah, well, no matter how hard we try, it's just out. So I said, okay, let's do this with me. You can't go away. You're in the class. You have to write. Mm -hmm. And we did free flow writing. So that's a technique that I use. What is free flow writing? Free flow writing is where I take them on a journey, like on a visualization journey. It's a, it's a technique a lot of writers use, creative writing uses. And then um, you take them to a point where you know they're almost at the subconscious level and that's the level they write from so without logically thinking out anything so it's free flow it's um technique that helps you just get your feelings out doesn't matter what it is right. and it could be good bad ugly and um, the thing is these things normally these classes i tell them you don't have to publish you can burn whatever you've written nobody is going to read it unless they want to share it in the group. No one asks them to read it. So in one of these classes, uh, after we did the 10, 12 days or 14 days, we were sharing our stories. And because I had read all of them, they were just amazing stories. Okay. And so we decided that, okay, this is the first, this is not even um, Wings of a Woman. I'm talking a year earlier. This is 2020. Okay. And I okay. said, okay, let's, take these stories and if you are ready we'll pu I'll publish it for you so they all said yes and I published it for them and the result was Quarantales uh, which you'll see on my website and my Facebook page which was we had just got into quarantine then so every yeah. the whole world was in quarantine no one yeah. could get out of their houses so we were sitting at home and doing these 12 days of writing and the book came out called Quarantales so right. tales written in quarantine yeah. and so that became a huge... documentation of women that would ha they would have felt in the quarantine days of what yeah they exactly yeah yeah the stories but it was this not precious. quarantine in their homes it was stories of people who felt quarantined and locked down in their childhood so there are stories there you will read of people who've been women who've been abused but they were locked in, abused by their own family members, but they couldn't come out and tell those stories because it was too, it was not considered, um, you just, not appropriate. You couldn't say someone was in your family abusing you. There were other stories of children, people growing up in Europe where the circumstances made it so hard for them to break out. So many Indian stories where you're, you know, in an Indian household and, um, you know, 20 years ago, uh, getting a career and all that was considered, oh, you're neglecting the house. So yeah. those kind of, it was not lockdown, just physical lockdown, but it was locked down in your soul. And they came out with those stories. So when they did that, I decided then let's do one with, so we got 19 Indian women who were brought up in India, brought up traditionally, just like all of us are. And right. then they moved out of India and they settled around the world, including there's one or two authors who are Indian as well, who live in India, but they were all of Indian origin, settled around the world, like from all over US and Hawaii and where God knows where else. And they wrote their stories of their struggles, how they came out from a typical Indian male dominated household in those times, not so much now. And they stepped out, but also they started their own businesses and they thrived. And then they came together. And that Wings of a Woman, it became a huge hit. Like we've sold God knows more than a thousand copies by now. I haven't checked, but definitely in the first week alone, we sold to 680 copies. 
So I don't know how many we've sold after that. I have to look it up. I'm looking forward to reading that soon. It is. It's amazing. I mean, there are some stories that will bring tears to your eyes that people have actually gone through this. And the good part is that I coached them through the writing. And so they were not left alone to like, you know, fill in the blanks, just do this and the story is formed. So I did the actual coaching where they know learned how a story works how a chapter works and then they did it then i edited and you know we did the cover design but I incidentally think... the cover design was done by one of the daughters of the author oh that so, is great actually yeah. i think you are the uh, main person who were here who brought out those stories which were i think never would have come out so Probably you were the not, main yeah. some yeah. of them were quite scared there were some of them who had big issues like you know what's my mother-in-law going to say what's my husband going to say there were serious issues and we had to iron out those issues and we had to in some cases we de-identified the characters so you know they would not have any problems but they're just heart-rending stories they're also lovely to read because you know they there's the positive side as well but yeah it just shows what anyone is capable of. Part of inspiration is always there. Sorry, I didn't get yeah. that. Just the right coaching, a right amount of polishing or coaching makes a person like right. Yeah, absolutely. So any yeah. new book which we can expect anytime soon? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's about six or seven books coming out right now. We've just released Limitless this year. Uh, which is, again, um, it was released two days ago, a Limitless Breaking Boundaries in Business, and you can find it on Amazon. Again, that's about new entrepreneurs setting forth, and this is mostly to show that anybody stepping out can do it. doesn't matter. It's not a business book. It doesn't give you tools and things and how to set up business. That's the next one coming out. So the next one, and you know, all your viewers here, I invite you, if you would like to put in a story in the next compilation, so part two of Limitless, will we? I'm asking, looking for entrepreneurs who will share not just their backstory, but um, the aspects of setting up a business. So there are many, there are legal aspects, there are administrative aspects, there are you know, marketing, digital marketing, how do you go out there? How do you get customers? So Limitless 2 will be um, talk, taking the reader through this. So one, they've learned the story, they've learned the mindset. Now it's how do you actually do it? So again, all your listeners, you're welcome to come and pitch to me about uh, whether you'd want to. Everybody yeah. will come. come. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, moving towards the end, Lee, uh, would you like to give some advice for budding writers out there how can they start like take yes. up a pen and paper and start writing and any word of motivation for them yeah first is always journal if you can't don't have a journal have a phone if there's anything that strikes you someone tells you a story make a couple of notes you know our best ideas happen in the shower and at the most inappropriate moments but <laughs> All of these stories will eventually, you know, help you if you were to write a book. And even if you didn't write a book, it doesn't matter. Not everybody's going to write a book. But the stories are still there. Keep those stories. Tell those stories to your children. You know, the oral tradition of telling stories. Tell them that because children are missing out so much. Everything's not about social media or watching, you know, all those squid games or whatever it is. There's... We're missing out on so much of the culture because children don't know. Even my own children don't know a lot of the things. Today is Shivratri, right? Right. And my children are in Australia because I live in Australia. I'm now in India. But if you ask my children, they know. They'll tell. They'll nod and say, yeah, yeah, Shivratri. They have no clue. My fault because I haven't actually taught and told them the stories that go with it. Why do we do it? You know, what's the... Uh, meaning behind it and that's why I think to anyone if you're going to write a book wonderful like I'd love it um, I'd love to be able to help you there's heaps of free resources on my website I'm willing to help anyone free of cost just if you want to have a chat with me 
um, go and book me in on a, on my website. There's a, it's called rightclick.net.au and you can book me in on Calendly. But more importantly, it doesn't matter. Keep the stories, keep a journal, um, write whatever you feel like because writing is also healing. And I run yeah. a very popular program called Write to Heal where I bring in people and I, again, I take them through a journey where they can, you know, if they've been through trauma, suicidal ideations, all of that kind of thing, abuse, they can actually write out their feelings. And sometimes we don't have to have gone through so many traumatic events, even day-to-day -day things. You know, someone, a co-worker says something and it hurts you. Yeah. You need to heal from that because otherwise it just keeps settling. Writing helps you do that. It's piling up, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I just encourage everyone to write. I think that is lovely. Uh, it was lovely talking to you and I'm surely looking forward to read uh, Wings of Women and other books that are lined up. So thank you so much, Shoma. It was lovely talking to you. I hope thank all you of you... Me. Yeah. <laughs> I hope all of you are looking forward to read your book. Thank you so much and I wish every all of your members, Aparna, Rini, and everyone in Women Shine a wonderful International Women's Day and I hope all of you bring out your books one day. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. You, can, uh, you can just share that uh, link wherein you want people, you know, to connect with you so that you, because of the second edition which you're coming up, so the people can approach you and they can share these journeys as well to you. Yeah, how do I share that? I'm not very... How do you I can do just, that? You can, you can just uh, let me know. I just type in between. between. Yeah, you just let me know. T tell me again. Just repeat that link again. Oh, it's right click. Or oh, I'll just. It, can I put it in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Please do. Dot net. Dot net. As you can see, I'm not very familiar with Streamyard. So that's there. And my Facebook page is called From Blank Page to Bestseller. Okay. So what we'll do? We'll just. Uh, Share the links of your page uh, after this uh, meet. We'll just share on the yeah. chat box itself. And yeah. and my uh, Instagram handle is at Shomamitra. That's all. Yeah. So I'm a social media dinosaur, but um, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so I'm only on, on a very few places. But yeah, you can always reach out to me on email, on Messenger or whatever. But the yeah, do come and join the group Blank Page to Bestseller because there's heaps and heaps of... Um, writing uh, tips and stuff in there. And there's lots of other writers in there as well. So they can, you know, um, have a chat. Of course, we'll do that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so and much. Thank you, Rini, for lovely being a lovely moderator as always. Thank yeah. you so much. All okay, right. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye.